rights. And you gave a We've got breaking news from Toronto. Former Headley frontman Jacob Hogard has been sentenced to five years in prison for sexual assault. Hogard was found guilty earlier this year of sexually assaulting an Ottawa woman in a Toronto hotel back in 2016. The Crown asked for a prison term of between six and seven years, arguing the musician poses a risk to the public. The defence wanted three to four years, saying a psychiatric report shows Hogard was at a low risk to reoffend. With reaction, I am joined by Kim Schofield, criminal defense lawyer. She's in Toronto. Kim, the defense wanted three to four. The Crown wanted six to seven. Here we are, five years in prison for Jacob Hogard. Your reaction? So I think it's a reasonable sentence. Um, often what happens in any sentencing uh, proceeding is the defense goes low, the Crown goes high and the judge usually goes somewhere in the middle. Uh, five is on the higher side of the normal, not that there's a normal, but the average range um, on a sexual assault case, but there are some aggravating features here that the judge certainly would have taken into account. There's a lot of mitigating features in that he has no criminal record and he seems to have community and family support. So I would say five years is a reasonable sentence and sentence wise would not be touched by the Court of Appeal. So it's it's well within the, the uh, reasonable range. Okay, so I'm just a little bit confused then because we understand that there is some sort of appeal that will be taking place this afternoon. How does that play into the sentencing that was just handed down? So often what happens on, on cases where there are su where there's substantial jail sentence, uh, there's a bail pending appeal application at the Court of Appeal. So literally uh, an accused walks in in the morning, so into custody in the morning, and is released uh, in the afternoon or evening. Uh, and, and the basis for that is if there are grounds of appeal. And the appeal would come in the form of either a conviction appeal or sentence appeal. There is, in my view, uh, no grounds uh, for a sentence appeal, well within the, the range. Uh, but uh, there will be a conviction appeal. Um, and the conviction appeal will be based upon uh, judges' rulings, instructions the judge would have given, um, and uh, just the, the trial itself. So it would be a conviction appeal. Um, and often uh, these, the bail pending appeals are um, uh, on consent and then you just get out and you, uh, uh, you argue your appeal and if you're convicted, then you end up serving your sentence. And then if your uh, appeal is granted, you either have a new trial um, or an acquittal is, uh, is uh, replaced by uh, it's replaced instead of a conviction and acquittal is entered. Probably so, in this uh, case, it would not be a situation like that, uh, but rather would be a new trial ordered if the Court of Appeal finds that a, uh, an error has occurred. Now, that doesn't happen today. The only thing that happens today is an assessment to see if in light of the strength of the appeal and any other concerns, he's releasable pending the appeal. That's what we're hearing this afternoon. Okay, Kim, really appreciate you being with us.